This is Phantology. You may have heard of us. All right, what's up, Dark Wizards? This is Steven, your host with Phantology Podcast, along with my lifelong friend, Josh. And we're talking about a new series today. Well, I mean, new series to us. It's been out since 2011, 2012, right? Um, and it's the Alex Veris series by Benedict Jaka. Jaka. Um, and this is, if you've heard of it, you've probably heard it compared to Dresden Files, another urban fantasy series featuring a wizard living in a notable location. But uh, Josh, you and I are both big fans of the Dresden Files. When you heard about this one, I think we probably had the same thought, like we could get more Dresden in a alternate universe almost. And uh, for, I, I enjoyed the first book, at least. So we're just talking about Faded, which is uh, book one of the series. Yeah, um, same exact thing. Like I've been, I'm surprised I haven't come across this sooner, honestly. So I, I like looked for ways to itch that like Dresden scratch um, mm-hmm. for the the what was it like between 2015 and 2021 or something when we got um, the TV yeah. books? No, it was. It, was it might have been. It might have been 2020, but. It was at least five years, yeah. Yeah, so we had like that five-year gap, and so I I went and read like some other urban fantasy stuff, um, and it just wasn't you know I didn't love it like it was all kind of vampires and werewolves and it was fine, but it just wasn't really my cup of tea. Like it didn't really scratch that Dresden itch, mm-hmm. um, and so I'm I'm surprised I didn't hear about this series when I was kind of going through that phase, but um. Yeah, I, I this definitely is up that Dresden alley. I'm sure that fans of the series, I don't know, like if the community loves the like the comparison to Dresden Files, because you know I could see how that would get a little bit old. How the first thing that anybody yeah. talk, talks about is it's like yeah. Dresden, but nonetheless, like that's definitely where we're coming from when we're talking about the series as being big fans of Dresden, and now we're reading this without a whole lot of other experience in urban fantasy. Yeah, I, I hear you. I think we do need to do the Dresden comparison because it's our first episode talking about the series and it's worth explaining to other people who are watching that like Dresden and are intrigued. Um, you know, let's give them a little taste of how it may be similar, how it how it may be different. But at the same time, let's not go into this like ad nauseum because like you say, I bet the community is maybe a little bit tired of this. <laughs> yeah. Um and so, yeah, we'll talk about it for a few minutes. Uh, the thing that's weird to me, so I think if you were to just take, like, if you were to give somebody uh, Stormfront, which is the first Dresden book, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stormfront, yeah. and Faded, and you were just to give them, like, these two books without any clear, uh, you know, this book came first, this book came second. Like, which do you think is the stronger first book to a series? Just wondering, like... I, I mean, it's been a while since I've read Stormfront, I'll be honest, but I mean, I think everyone, Dresden fans would all agree that the series gets better as you yeah. go on, and Stormfront is, is really nothing special. I thought Faded might be the same, kind of similar, like, it was a good book, but, you know, nothing real stand out, nothing too unique about it, other than it was fun and had a lot of the same Dresden vibes. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought too. Like, I think all throughout, I was like, I was waiting for it to be worse than Dresden, if that makes sense. Like, okay, sure. A Dresden only not as good, right? Because I figured if it was as good as Dresden, then I would have heard about it by now, or I would have heard it about it before now. Mm-hmm. And then when I got done with the first book, I'm like, you know what? Like, if you're just to compare this, you know, first book to Dresden first book, I think you'd be hard pressed to say that like Dresden is clearly better than this. You know what I mean? Like. I, I mean, I'm sure there could be a case made for it, especially because like this was obviously pulling so much inspiration from Dresden. But just mm-hmm. as the books taken like out without any other context going on, this is a you know it it did really well and right, um, right. yeah. Maybe it's the case of someone wants to read urban fantasy, they go for a recommendation. People say Dresden Files because that's kind of like number one top of the list, and they go through some Dresden Files, and I, it's just like it, it's 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 on the top of the list. So that's what happens first. And maybe a lot of people just never make it to this one, which is maybe unfair because in a vacuum, at least 
just looking at the first books, we seem to think they're of similar quality. Yeah. And who knows, maybe this one doesn't, maybe the series doesn't ever reach the heights that Dresden does because Dresden obviously gets to some really high highs. Mm -hmm. So who knows? We'll see when we get there. Um, but also the series doesn't have some of the baggage that Dresden has maybe like in terms of, yeah. you know, how it portrays women. I think, I mean, I think that there was a pretty big change between like 2000 and 2010 when like Dresden was first written and when this book was written kind of on what was uh, super well accepted with how women are portrayed in media. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're reading the Night Angel books right now, which were also written in early 2000s, early to mid 2000s, actually maybe mid to late 2000s. And they have a lot of the same kind of male gaze type problems. But we're reading the most recent Night Angel book, which is, you know, has grown up a bit. Yeah. Anyway, it's just kind of interesting to think about. Like, I, I could see somebody that's really put off, like, likes everything about Dresden except for the male gaze aspect mm. of it. And then I might be like, oh, you should read this series. Do you, I mean, I'm saying this after having read a small sample of this series. If it crashes and burns in later books, then, you know, obviously that would affect my recommendation. But right now, I would definitely say to somebody, that, hey, you might want to look towards the series if you don't like the male gaze aspect of Dresden. Nice. Anyway, uh, before I go yeah. further, let's uh, just briefly pause for a message from our sponsor. Okay, so to continue, uh, so the book is 12 books. I mean, the series is 12 books long, finished in 2021, so we're getting into a, a completed series, which is nice, which is another thing you can, you know, another pro in the favor of the Alex Ferris uh, series because you can say it is finished in Dresden. We know it's going to have like three, four, five, maybe like I don't think Jim Butcher is ac exactly said how many more books, but that's still years down the road before we have any kind of completion. And a lot of people like completed series, and here's one. Yep. Um, and especially because Jim Butcher has gotten less consistent with his publishing, you know, we, we were looking, I put a, um, a Wikipedia article in the notes mm -hmm. for um, like in, in our discord shout out to our discord and it was just like the first what, 10 12 bucks were just like maybe eight nine months apart just bang 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 and then we got to 2015 and now we're you know years five years and now we're a yeah. few years between the which is I mean, fine but to be fair he does... started he started another series his steampunk series and he did release two books after the five-year gap so it's not like yeah, you know, this it's, is no like Rothfussian collapse, well, right? Right. Right. I'm not saying that, but if there are another six books coming out, and there are four years between books, and that's you know 24 yeah. years before the series is finished, like that's you know a big did deal. Did you see? Like, I guess we're kind of diverting into Jim Butcher, but it seems appropriate. Anyway, did you see he just tweeted out recently that he was starting? on the next Dresden book, and he said ETA to completion of the first draft would be about 16 weeks. So he can write a whole book in four months. Yeah, honestly, that doesn't seem insane to me. Like, th th those books aren't super long, you know? Like, right. I, I, I think first draft... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm just saying, like, this. that might be another pro, like we were talking about, to the Alex Harris series. Um, okay, so that all out of the way, um, what can people expect getting into this series. It's urban fantasy. It's about a wizard, a diviner wizard to be specific. So someone who can see into the future. And we're not going to do any spoilers, at least in this part, since we're going into a new series. So um, feel free to just kind of listen in, see if you're interested. Um, just back was, of the book spoilers, yeah, I guess. Yeah, just back the book stuff. So Alex Varis is the wizard, of course. That's you know the, the titular um, character. He lives in London. Um, like Dresden, he goes through a lot of different kind of big London landmarks. I assume that's going to continue later in the series. I enjoy that. And uh, just on a, on a personal, I'm going to London next week. So this was something that I wanted to read because I wanted to you know see the sights and also have some kind of connection to it because I went to Chicago a few years ago and had just kind of a fun time like examining some things in Chicago looking for, you know, secret Dresden. I'm not going to say what they are, but, uh, you know, some iconic Chicago things are used in the Dresden files. And I'm assuming, you know, in this book, we see some big London landmarks already. 
and I bet that's that's fun, especially for people who know the city well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it does give you that really kind of cozy feel at the beginning of this like um, shop owner that you know uh, that you can really relate to, and you feel like I feel like the author does a really good job at just making you feel like um, you know the character has been lived in, that he he knows this character well, and that you know this character well, kind of from page one, mm-hmm. and that that's not to say that there's not like uh surprises and that you don't get to know more about this character but i don't know you just kind of feel like you get to step into this person's life which for me was a big selling point of dresden and uh the series does the same thing and with dresden we see years pass character totally changes from book one to you know book 17 where we're at right now so i don't know if the same thing happens for alex but i'm I'm assuming, you know, 12 books long, time's going to pass. I'm guessing a lot's going to happen. Um, but in the first book, it was, it, you know, it felt like more of kind of a small scale conflict. We were not saving the world. We were just, uh, you know, doing kind of like a heist type plot with some twists. And Alex took on some different enemies. And, and the whole thing was very kind of encapsulated. The book is not long either. I think the audiobook was was like 10, 11 hours long. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of like a, just kind of a banger, just kind of a fun little uh, slice of life adventure, few days of excitement in Alex's life. Yep. Yep. And there's some good side characters going on. Like there's some potential chemistry, maybe like friend, like you don't really know what's going to happen. Like there's gotta some have setup. Got to have that. Gotta, you got to have that. Like with a, you know, and then there's some fun, uh, like, fantastical characters that are side characters as well that are fun um there's some antagonists that are that are appropriately menacing there's some gray characters that you're like oh you know he might team up with these guys but you know that they're not the best of people um and alex has some grayness in him too but not enough that you like aren't rooting for him the entire time i don't know it's just like there's there's a lot of good ingredients that make for a compelling mm-hmm. story and that make for a compelling setup to a series and it's a first-person narrative, and there is a fun tone throughout. Uh, Alex never takes it too seriously. I, I, I enjoy those types of stories because, you know, you don't always need to read something where the stakes of the world are are up um, in in the balance, right? Like, it can just be fun. There's a lot of humor throughout. He's a snarky guy. He's, he's a funny mm-hmm. guy. I don't know if it was any, like, laugh-out-loud moments, but it was just kind of fun to go through and, and quite an easy read as well. Yeah. Um, we haven't been doing as much content warnings, um, but for this one, like definitely PG, PG thirteen. There's some language here and there, but it's not like it's on every page. There's no like there's some violence. It's not like super super graphic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I, this isn't for the rest of the series, just kind of for the first book, obviously. But like I'd for sure be you know throw this to a sixteen year old and say have at it. You know I don't think there's yeah. anything. And there that like um that a teenager or younger even couldn't handle like yeah. there are there are some violent bits there's some pretty gruesome in some ways deaths but it's not like it's like thrust in the in your face you know what i mean it's definitely pg-13 mm-hmm. kind of marvel maybe even marvel level like violence marvel's a good comparison yeah 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 I, it, I would it say, can yeah. get gruesome it can get gruesome but most of the time it's not mm-hmm. yeah yeah, Marvel movie maybe has like one F word in the course of the whole movie. There's like this what, might have two, a little bit more than that. Yeah, there were like two or three. But I mean, a book is longer than a movie, so you know, still hits yeah. the MPA requirements or whatever for PG thirteen. Yeah, it's definitely definitely nothing crazy. And again, we'll see when it uh, if it gets worse in later books, but. Okay, so uh, anything more to say in the non-spoiler part, or we can just kind of switch over and start talking about the actual plot of uh, Faded? Yeah, let's get going on it. Okay, so I thought it was a pretty basic, straightforward, like there weren't too many branching off plot threads. It was really just kind of like we're introduced to Alex. We have the heist set up. He's got to go find the, the thing, the Fate Weaver. The, kind of a MacGuffin. Well, I'm interested to see what you think about that since uh, you and Jake had a MacGuffin debate a few episodes ago. 
but uh, you just kind of goes from like scene to scene. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was appropriate for the story it was trying to tell where there was really nothing too complex in the plot. Yeah, I I don't know. I kind of have a weird relationship with MacGuffins. Like, <laughs> this is like so you clearly have weird, meaning. To... I have a weird relationship with MacGuffins. I, I, this is an example where it's so clearly a MacGuffin that like it doesn't bother me that much because it's not like it's pretending like it's not. You know, what I mean, here's the trophy. Mm. People want the trophy. Let's go find. It. Let's the first one to get it is the winner. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. it's it's a compelling enough plot. The thing that bugs me is when is when a MacGuffin is treated like it's like not a MacGuffin. I guess. Do you know what I mean? Like when it's. Um, I'm not it's coming like, up with a great example off the top of my head, but when they have to go find the trophy because they think it's gonna save the world or whatever, and then it turns out to be no big deal. Yeah, but even then, that's like an inversion of a trope, I guess. But what's what's like a good example? Maybe an example of what I'm talking about is maybe in like the first thing that's coming to mind is like uh, the tri like Harry Potter and the tri a tournament. When okay. he has to go get when like you said, the when you said trophy, I was thinking of yeah. well, I was yeah. thinking of the the cup at the end, which was a porky. But I, I wouldn't say that's my governor. Are you thinking of a different example? No, not the porky, but like the different things that he has to go like find the gillyweed in order to that's what it's called, right? The gillyweed in order to go do like do the underwater. Like, well, I challenge. mean, he doesn't he doesn't have to find the gillyweed. He ends up just having it given to him and. Yeah, but okay, maybe like the egg is the MacGuffin because he's got to yeah, like solve okay. the riddle and the. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think those are but, those okay. are kids books too. But but when it's just thrown in there for the characters to go do something that the reader doesn't care about, but this like it makes you the reader care about it because it's the whole point of the book. You know what I mean? Like. It's the whole point of the like the driving force of the plot of the book, mm-hmm. and it's like upfront about that. I guess I would say that things like this, MacGuffin, not MacGuffin, whatever you want to call it, it's fine as long as me as the reader think it's a cool thing that they're trying to get that is going to matter in some way. And I was fine with this. I thought it was interesting, and it seemed to matter to everyone quite a lot. So. I wouldn't say it bothered me as, you know, as a cheap plot device. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I I think I largely agree with that. Anyway, we 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 maybe should do like a deep dive episode into MacGuffins and when why they bother us sometimes we and not others. Have to define this instead of just like yeah. nebulously waving our hands and yeah, shouting at MacGuffin, burn the witch. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, I mean that was kind of the the view of the plot from ten thousand feet, but as we kind of go through like the events of the plot, were there things that you enjoyed specifically, or elements that you thought were stronger or weaker? Yeah, so um, uh, let's see. I mean, because the story was so driven by just the MacGuffin, like the plot in some ways is the I would say the weaker aspect of the story maybe because it was so kind of like one dimensional. Let's go from like mm. here to here to here also that we can get this thing. But having said that it was executed well because it was so fast paced. It didn't feel like there was any wasted time. Um, so it was fine. It, it didn't distract me. I would say like the best thing about the book was um, Alex as a character. Do you agree with that? Um, like that his voice was well established. I yeah, thought, uh, I thought Alex and Luna were both the best parts of the book. Yeah, I think the best part is the character work as a whole, with the highlight being Alex being like a well-defined character, mm-hmm. and maybe it's just because like you know he's a he's a youngerish guy that you know can do magic, so maybe we just kind of relate to him in that. But like, because we can do magic, because we can do magic. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean, sense. like, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. yeah, like I I don't know if like a I don't know maybe we just relate to him. But sure. not everybody. Would. Yeah, like younger. Are we are we younger, middle aged now? I don't know. That, I, whatever. I don't think we're middle aged. But like younger, middle aged, because <laughs> that's probably uh, what I would say. Alex is. He's on. 
he was not he's not there yet but he's he's not like super young but he's I think yeah he's, uh, yeah i don't remember yeah. if he says how old he actually is but i yeah like, i saw yeah. him as like pretty as far as like life situation other than being able to do magic i could step into his shoes sure that, yeah that's just what it made that's what it made it feel like to me yeah i think oh. um to kind of give you a counterpoint to this the strong character work i thought the worst part of the book for me was the inter in, in interjection the interweaving of his backstory into the book i just thought it was kind of jarring like all of a sudden we're about halfway through and then he has this intense dream sequence that just kind of dumps to the reader like okay this is what happened it was hinted at a lot of things in his backstory previous to that and then all of a sudden he kind of goes through and uh and you see exactly what happened in his backstory which was fine like it's an interesting backstory but at the same time i don't i, I feel like that's something that you could maybe even stretch out if you're writing a long series you could stretch that out into multiple books and like kind of hang some hints here and there and make it a big a big thing if you know and, and bring back more characters from the backstory and really kind of bring it out and make it dramatic i don't know maybe uh maybe this first book came out and the author was just thinking like let's include everything so it's self-contained and we have a full story yeah yeah that's one of those tricky ones um because it has kind of bothered me on the flip side with Dresden, and we pro I promise we won't be talking about Dresden for too long. But like, it has kind of bothered me this little rollout of his backstory of when he was a kid. It's like we know so much about this character, and we're in his head so much that we like don't know a few like key aspects of his life. That's it has fair. kind of started okay. bothering me about the series. But um, so I'm basically like, saying yeah. it should have been more like Dresden, and you're saying it's good that it was less like Dresden maybe i mean we'll see like maybe there's a balance where like you find out most things in the first three or four books you know mm -hmm. uh, i don't i mean i don't know I hope, <laughs> that, I hope that as we get into the series something happens to maybe like recontextualize his backstory somehow like i don't know which it does his actions were really influenced in some way or the the mentor guy um what was his name uh richard uh, Right, like yeah. Richard maybe had some ulterior motive, and now that he, now that Alex like went against that, he ended up causing this big problem. Dresden kind of does this a little bit with his backstory, but um, yeah, I, I hope it's just not as simple as okay, here's the backstory, we're done, with, we're done with the backstory, now we're gonna go on. Yeah, um, I think that it does set up like this interesting um were with like the white or like the light uh wizards oh, and the, dark the light wizards. in the dark yeah the light in the dark and pretty you know basic but the thing is it's not like good and bad like a lot of the antagonists for the first book were from like the light side you know what i mean like yeah so it's not it's not like you can just say oh light good dark bad you can right. be like well maybe the overall theory like uh, of the dark wizards of like morality not really mattering you know, is like obviously maybe more dangerous, but at the same time, it's not like just because you're a light means you're like on this mm -hmm. on the right side of things. You could also I think there's also bad light wizards. So it's just kind of interesting, um, and I hope that they pay that off and that that uh, conflict keeps being really interesting and that he's forced to team up with some dark wizards throughout the series. You know. I mean, I didn't really see any wizards that he met that I could say, like, okay, this is a good character. That, Like, okay, here's the Michael Carpenter of the story, right? Like, everyone was fairly gray. Well, what's his... Well, uh, okay, the, maybe the, some of the Dark uh, Wizards... Some of the Dark Wizards were, like, definitively evil. Yeah. But the lights were just as questionable with their actions. What The, the younger guy, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, oh, like the scholar guy? Yeah, the scholar guy. Yeah, he's I don't good. remember his name either, but okay, sure. Yeah, like he was a good guy. He, they, I mean, they kind of made it seem like, oh, is he like going to betray us? But he just ended up being a good guy through and through. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Okay. He's younger, though. He hasn't been influenced by you yeah. know, the, the yeah. grayness of the light wizard court yet. Yeah. Um, 
Let's one see. Thing, so I thought that the wizards were interesting. Like that was really what this book centered around. But at the same time, um, I would have liked to see maybe a more more variety of magical enemies, magical magical enemies and allies that he encounters. Like he does spend some time with Arachne, who I thought was a cool, fun character, and uh, and he has his uh, what's what's the name of the air elemental? That's basically like toot toot. Yeah. Oh shoot. Uh, fly star. Oh, Starbreeze. You put Starbreeze. Star, yeah. Yeah. Starbreeze. Yeah. So he he has those two encounters, but are there any other like cool magical, ma- like foreign magical things? I don't I don't recall um, as much, at least in this book. So I hope that oh, the there's the, expands there, to bring in more creatures. Yeah. There is oh, the, the, the thirteen at the end of it. Well, and then there's like this like ancient being that like imbued himself into the object that oh, yeah. was, took himself okay. over, and it get hint you get hints that you know that there is a lot more power available if they you know yeah unlock certain abilities, right? Yeah, 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 that's true. But I mean, we don't have we don't have the Fey Court, we don't have the vampires, we don't have the werewolves, like those kind of like commonplace magical things don't at least in this first I think book they're mentioned right don't. i think they're mentioned do they have they been mentioned it's anyway party I, yeah i enjoy that aspect of dresden i think it's fun just more variety more cool things to see on the page and point out and say like that's cool and i think if if every book is just another struggle between the wizards it's going to get pretty old yeah i think that there are some good plot threads that are being set up for a, for a compelling series Mm-hmm. Um, both with the wizards and like with Arachne, like what's Arachne doing there? Like, um, you know, are there other like magic users that um, that are that can, might have influence that the courts or like I don't know if they're called courts that the light wizards and dark wizards haven't corrupted yet? Like, there there's some interesting concepts that I'm excited to explore in the series. Um, yeah, yeah. From what we've heard, at least from what well, I don't know if you heard this, but from what I heard from um, our friend Jason on Discord was that the series kind of starts in a Dresden-esque, like smaller conflicts, but then gets bigger to where the stakes become higher and higher. So I enjoy that. I, I think I enjoy both types of stories. So to have a series that covers both and like naturally grows into bigger things, I think that's cool. I enjoy how Dresden does that. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, you'd hope that it kind of could grow a little bit, but... Um, it makes sense. Like, if we're going to follow a cool character through years of their life, hopefully they're able to, you know, progress and get more capable and have to take on bigger and bigger challenges. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the uh, one thing that I don't know if this bugs me or not, but as I was reading, I kind of always was thinking about this was the whole like diviner aspect. And I, I put a message about this on Discord. We're plugging our Discord a lot. If you want to chat about uh, this series or really any fantasy series, just follow the link on the episode description and and hop on. But the whole diviner aspect of, you know, he can see the future. I think that's just really tricky to to do right, because if he can see the future, then you would think, okay, he's not going to make any mistakes. But I mean, I get that he has to focus on the future and he doesn't he doesn't see everything. He just sees all the possible outcomes and a Doctor Strange-like, and so he doesn't have unlimited power. But at the same time, if something happens that is unexpected to Alex, as the reader, you're like, wait, why was that unexpected? He should have been able to like, know that was coming. So I don't think this is like a, ba- a good or bad thing. I just think it's kind of a unique challenge to setting up a plot device like this. Yeah, I I think that, that there's enough... Um guidelines that are put around it like for example you can't see past a decision that hasn't been made yet that makes it that makes it mm-hmm. interesting to me and that makes it not like he has unlimited powers like he if somebody's deciding to walk into a shop yeah you can see that that's going to happen if somebody's like planning on attacking him you can see that that's going to happen but you can't see like years into the future and be like oh i'm going to get attacked on this date because like obviously those decisions haven't been made yet right so you know i think uh, and he has to be actively looking into the future to see it. So um, 
you know, like you'd think that he would start the day off by like, oh, let me go look into the future, see if anybody's going to come attack the shop. But again, he can't like look, you know, if he's going to be other places, he would have to look at the events that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. There, there are some parts like um, there's a, there's something in the second book that happens that you're like, oh, you should have thought of this. Like you could have used your powers, and somebody else points out like, oh, you could use your powers to do this, and it's like, okay, Alex should have thought of that. You know what I mean? Um, and you had an example in the first book where, um, yeah, what was that conversation you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, when he's talking to Morden, I think that's his name, the you know like the baddest of the bad wizards, and he has to decide if he's going to tell the truth about the key that he has, and he does. And then Morden comes out with the key, and he's like, "Oh crap! You know, like if I had lied and said I didn't have it, then this would have gone really badly for me." But he should have been able to see his mm -hmm. choice to lie or tell the truth, right? Like, I, I feel like it should have worked out like that. Yeah, that's true. You'd think that he would be able to do that. Um, yeah. So I think the key is is to making him use it in like uh, in the times when you as the reader would be like, oh, he should obviously use that. But that's the same with any magic system, right? Like, there's going to be times where if you as the reader are like, oh, he could have solved the problem using the magic and he didn't do it, then it's like, um, it pulls you out. You know what I mean? If somebody right, can jump right. jump on top of a building and, like, chooses to walk up the stairs and then gets, like, ambushed by people as he's walking up the stairs, you're like, oh, he should have jumped on top of the building. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and so I think that's you're gonna run into that issue with any magic system, and this right. is like kind of a new one that we haven't seen a lot. So I'd fine with it. That's why Brandon Sanderson likes doing systems with like exhaustible amounts of magic, because if he needs something to happen that they can't deal with magic, he's like, oh, they they ran out of stormlight. Their their metal reserves are empty. <laughs> well, and as the reader, what are you supposed to say? Like, no, he shouldn't have run out of stormlight because, like, okay, like it. That's what happens. I mean. I do feel like I do feel like some readers in Stormlight are probably going to be like that. Like, oh, the the moon or the sun was at this level. That means that there should have been more investiture in the or the last Stormlight was this many days ago. That means, like, I feel um, like yeah, some, it's been to that some point where people are definitely yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah. Overall, like, I'm really excited to keep reading the series. And um, I'm reading Cradle right now, which I'm also excited about. But like, part of me is like, oh, I kind of wish I could just keep like reading Alex Ferris, maybe because it's just like kind of newer and a little bit more exciting to me. I'm really enjoying Cradle, but uh, those are two like long series that I'm gonna I'm kind of gonna need to rebound between. Yeah, you're reading two series that are kind of like shorter, episodic, banger books. They're both longer series. They're Cradle's almost done. So you're yeah. having, you know, a pretty similar experience maybe with both books. Uh -huh. It's it's yeah, fun comparing them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, final point. I I don't think we've done Dresden comparisons too much, but you know, would you say, like, as far as a comparison to another series, sometimes it can be tricky, right? Like, oh, it's too derivative. It's too much of a copy. Whatever. I didn't have any issues with that. I think that you'd have to be a pretty picky reader or like just like a crazy fan of Dresden to be hating on this series for that. Like I thought it was fine. There were a lot of, there were several like one-to-one -one comparisons with how Dresden works, at least in the first book. But it was like unique enough where I, it didn't bother me too much. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's like online wars that go on over this. Like I haven't dipped my toe in here yet, but like, I'm sure just like anything when, when things are so similar, you know, it's like with tech, it's like Apple versus Android or Windows versus Mac. Like you're going to, when when things are sim like do similar things, there's going to be fanboys of them, right? That like don't want to hear anything bad about theirs or like think so clearly that their opinion is right about which is better. Um, but um, like you said, I, I think that it's, um, I think that they're both like, pretty good and that you can't go wrong so far with either of them um i will say i i didn't i did appreciate the shout out to dresden and like the first chapter or two of the book did you yeah. catch that one where it's like yeah there's rumors that there's even a wizard in chicago that operates out of his uh out of his shop or whatever that or that advertises as a private detective so i i mean i think it's fun that he's paying homage to to it um 
thing that this kind of reminds me of, and I didn't read a ton of these, but like there were a ton of just like straight off Tolkien ripoffs. You know what I mean? Like in the seventies, like sixties and seventies, and okay, even kind of into the eighties. Which again, we haven't. Like I don't think either one of us have read very many of those. But like, and Wheel of Time really starts to innovate, and like, you know, Shinar starts to innovate on top of these tropes. And like, part of me kind of wishes that like there could have been a little bit more innovation, like on top of Dresden, where it's like it doesn't really feel like there's anything that Dresden doesn't have in it, besides maybe not some of the negatives, like the male gaze aspect. Mm-hmm. The divining aspect is, yeah, that's a different ability, and it seems more narrow, but it doesn't feel like that's huge step forward for the genre if you know you know what i mean like yeah neither one of us have read a ton of urban fantasy so i don't know if we can say too much of what's out there but it does feel like i mean in this first book at least it feels like okay we've taken dresden we've given him a different ability we've kind of like his personality is still pretty similar we've put him over here in london and he's going off on an adventure with the sidekick like yeah if if his if this guy's name was harry dresden alternative universe multiverse whatever like i would believe it yeah that's a good way to say it i um yeah don't have too much to add to that but you're right like even if it was just like fan like fan fiction of dresden like you'd be like okay yeah that's kind of i could see it yeah 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 and i don't necessarily think that's a bad thing anything that take that takes away from this series, but maybe like a little bit of a missed opportunity. But we also haven't finished the series, so you know we'll see what direction it goes in. Yeah, fair enough. Um, when are you planning on reading book two? Are you planning on starting it? Yeah, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll listen on my flight over to London, or maybe I'll be like reading it as I take the train around to get a full immersive experience. <laughs> Yeah, Uh, I guess for listeners that made this part, let us know how you want us to do the rest of the series. I think I am pretty committed to like reading all the books, but like if we are only going to do reviews like for Cradle and Dresden, we've been doing every two books doing a review. Did we do that for Dresden, or did we just do every? No, we did. uh, We did an individual review for every Dresden Files book. Yeah. So I think I think I might more lean forward to wanting to do or like every two episodes every two books per episode i think two books yeah. seems fine let's let's see the length see if they get yeah. any longer as we go on and if they do really really well you know share the video if they do really, really video and podcast and if they if a lot of people are listening to them then maybe we could do each individual book but um so yeah that's kind of what we want to hear from you about what do you guys think um and if if you're interested in us you know going through the series awesome all right well that's our review of faded by benedict Jaka. We should probably should we do out. oh yeah sorry should we do numbers out of like ratings out of 10 real fast throw those okay, out there sure yeah what do you think of faded yeah i'm going uh seven maybe 7.5 out of 10 i'll say uh i'm gonna say seven not a 7.5 just straight up seven so i'll, I'll do seven so that we have different scores no <laughs> I, I'll, said, do I seven. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I'll do 7.5 yeah you i'll do 7.5 so we, yeah we okay. have different scores yeah very yeah. um average but promising start to a series and something that uh i think we would both agree that can be built upon and create a a pretty cool world and series excellent cool all right thanks josh talk to you later thanks